Good morning or good afternoon, coaches. Uh, first of all, I should say that it's my big pleasure to to be with you today and the next two clinics until the end of the May. I'm happy always to collaborate with my friend, Coach Arik, who is a great coach on international level. And really, I'm very happy also listening and learning something from here also in previous session. And I'm very happy that we are on the same basketball line. So all the things which I'm going to say to you are completely linked with uh, his opinions, because I think uh, that uh, we as a coaches, we should create our opinions, not philosophy. Only winning coaches can have philosophy because of, before to start coaches as they already introduced me i'm I, as a role they already say i'm professor nena trunic coming from serbia with a lot of experience as a professional basketball player on point point guard position in serbia and italy in ex-yugoslavia turkey different countries so last 10 years i'm working uh, for fiba europe coaching department and i was as you uh, already mentioned i was a member of one great uh, under 16, under 18, and under 20 ex-Yugoslavia national team. That was probably the only team in the history who never lost the game in the youth category. So with six NBA players coming out from that team. So all those experience and also sitting with great coaches every summer. So are part of, of my present of my today presentation. One more time, I should go back. So I would like to share my opinion with you. But first of all, I should say uh, that uh, as a coaches, especially today, especially in online clinics, you cannot expect miracles. So we cannot find vaccina for basketball in this clinic. So our job is to open some some ways, open some windows for you, uh, because in today basketball, everybody are looking just for final product, but it's not possible because bas basketball is not is not event. Basketball is process. So all of us should teach. It's long way in front of us. Uh, of all of us, so we cannot say that we can get some special place or some special knowledge. You should be focused on your own development, and this is the main goal of the coaching clinics, in order to be better and better, in order to filtering all information which are coming out from different experts, from different games, or and from different uh, situations. So before to start that, I would like to say honestly that, of course, as Coach Eric said, this is not Bible of basketball, what we are going to share with you. There are our opinions about some special situations, and I think that you should create your own situation, but probably be in line with this, especially with Arik, with Arik because he's responsible for development of basketball in this way. So if you are paying to him, you should listen to what he's saying. Uh, before to start, so this mistake in typing is not because of because I'm a bad professor. It's because this computer, probably your computer is not supporting FIBA. FIBA font, so it's not it's not it's not mistake. So today I will talk about uh, basic guidance and practice content for different age groups of young players. As uh, Arik already said, so we should be in the same line. So this is the process. So we we cannot find some instant solution how to work with kids, and uh, because it's take time, it's take minimum eight uh, eight or ten years of continuous work on some skills. Uh, in order to arrive on the top level. Before to start sharing information related to some specific age, I'm always saying in the clinics that we can divide basketball, let's say, in two basketballs. So youth program basketball and senior basketball. In youth program basketball, our main goal is to create players for the future. So create players able to compete on the senior level. Of course, it's good to win something. It's good to make some results in youth, and this is the part of, of our job. But it's not main goal. So our main goal is to build their house of basketball, is to build their competencies, physical, technical, mental, for the top level. This is process. It takes time. We should be patient on that. Senior level, doesn't matter if you're talking about third Dutch league or NBA, we have just one goal to win the game. So we can do everything we want. But youth program is something else. So because of that, it's very important to know that um, uh, if we have a so-called windows of trainability, uh, what, is, what are the windows of trainability? Of course, you know everything about it, but my, my job is to, to repeat because now it's, it's a good moment to repeat that. So there are specific parts, there are specific periods of development of kids when you should insist on some specific skills. When you have best effects of good practice, in, on improvement of those skills. If you are going to miss those windows of trainability, it's very difficult after that to arrive 
to arrive on the top level and to, to, to be competitive on the top level. So it's very important to understand this at the beginning. And now, step by step, I will try to, uh, to share with you my ideas uh, about, uh, about specific goals, specific tasks for, spe for specific age group. So as you know, for example, you can check on internet uh, very good uh, document related to this baby to baby guidance for youth is uh, Canadian basketball program, a long term Atlas development program, uh, which is going to divide kids in different age categories. So here, this basic basketball development model can be defined in, in different age group at the beginning. So there is there are some basic activities between zero and six. So we don't need to talk because nobody is coming to play basketball before six. And it's not good to start with kids to play basketball. There is a one main reason. First of all, they cannot be focused. But after that, uh, kids, normal, normal kids, normal developed, developed, developed kids, they cannot uh, get the object coming from the from the frontal plane. Uh, so it's very important to understand that if you start to play basketball before kids are not able to catch the ball, to pass the ball, they cannot uh, receive good information from their special um, field. So it's it's not good to start before, especially because they don't know even how to walk, how to run, how to do basic fundamental movement skills, especially in today world because everybody is sitting in front of televisions and mm, playing uh, video games so they are not ready definitely so we should take care to consider that fact at the beginning first stage when kids start to play basketball let's say play basketball to start coming on basket so-called basketball practice are not they are not even basketball practice but let's say they start we, start, we should start to teach them fundamental movement skills on basketball court Great example you have in Ajax football club and you can check a lot of great videos on internet how they are dealing with kids in that age. They are not touching football. So they are playing, they are working on basketball, on uh, football skills after that. So first of all, fundamental skills. So for each specific age, I divide uh, content of practice and basic guidance in three, three segments, technical, tactical and physical. But before to start, uh, as Arik already made in the first presentation, I should we should divide and we should understand what is the meaning of technique and tactic. So technique is practically proper execution of skills, offensive, defensive, but also non-basketball skills like walking, running, uh, changing direction, jumping, stopping, two legs jumps, one leg jump, front uh, turns, back turns, all those stuff are part of technique. But if you're talking about basketball technique, this is proper uh, execution of the mechanic of basketball skills, both offensively and defensively. Tactic. Uh, what is the meaning of word tactic? Because some coaches, I have a lot of students, when we are talking about tactic, they already think about horns, about flares, about something else. No. Tactic is how to use learned or acquired skills. So in which game situation you should learn between the legs dribble, behind the back dribble, cross step, uh, open step, parallel defensive uh, stance, uh, diagonal defensive stance. So I think that outside of some other opinions, uh, because I think, as I said before, that all of us, we should have opinions, but not opinion based by nothing, based on nothing. We should have opinion based on arguments. So. My always I'm asking questions, my students, and I will share this idea with you right now. So I think that we should start with tactic immediately when we are going to teach kids technical skills. How? Because when we are going to explain them, for example, crossover dribble, we should say in which game like situation they can use crossover dribble. And we should create after that drills which are supporting our speech. So. Practically, we are starting with tactic on the moment when we start teaching technique. Of course, there are different level of tactics. There is an individual technique and tactic, practically all kinds of one-on-one -on -one situations, offensively and defensively. There is a group tactic, so all kind of collaborations with two, three and four players and team tactic five and five. So at the beginning, if we discuss about this first uh, first stage, first hour stage or second stage in the in the development model of kids, which is 
six to eight years for females and uh, six to nine for males. For boys, of course, we should understand that at the beginning we should work mostly on individual tactic. Because also on FIBA clinics, we are sharing that idea that if you if kids know how to how to play basketball, if we teach them individual technique, after that is not problem to uh, get uh, on uh, to move on uh, group collaboration or or uh, collaboration with five players. Because we are saying always, and I'm saying always to my students and to all the coaches who are attending attending my clinics, that individual technique and tactic is for whole career, but team tactic is for one game. So probably you can win just one game playing one to two zone press. But if your players knows how to your left how to use left hand layup, uh, they will know that for all the life, for all the career. So it's very important to be focused on the skills. At the beginning of let's say organized basketball practice, which starts usually worldwide in mini basket programs in uh, under seven or under eight, under nine years, I think our main goals from in, uh, in technical field should be. Uh, to teach them coordination. So this is windows of trainability or sensitive zone for coordination, speed and aerobic endurance. But I will talk later when we discuss about physical stuff. So technically, we should use coordination using fundamental basketball skills. Passing, catching, stopping, movement without the ball, uh, shooting also, ball handling, basics of dribble, basic of getting open. So footwork, because... As we said before, for movement without the ball, so me, we have uh, practically very low percentage of possession, ball possession during the game. So mostly players are spending 80, 90 percent uh, on the on their uh, game time without the ball. So we should then teach them how to move properly. That's everything is about footwork, because footwork is for whole career. Outside of level of the basketball. Players are going to use, use correct footwork before. So if we start to teach them basic footworks like starting, stopping, changing direction, landing as a very important and very risky part of basketball because of injury. So we should start to teach them at the beginning. Ball handling, of course, stationary. I'm not so big believer in stationary work uh, ball handling. But at the beginning, in order to acquire some basic techniques, basic uh, uh, to become familiar with the ball, of course, we should do some uh, stationary ball handling move. But as soon as possible, I like to uh, to move on the on the on the dribble with the with movement. Uh, also related to questions which you made to Coach Arik at the beginning uh, about the shooting, I think that uh, we should start with teaching shooting mechanic or shooting form from the very first practice of mini basket. Why? Because coaches, if you are giving basketball to the kids outside of practice, they will shoot on the basket. They are not going outside on the playground to be in this sliding in defensive stance or to play defense or to jump to the ball or to make close out. When you are giving ball to the kids, first thing to do, they will shoot on the basket. So on the practice or outside of the practice, they will have some repetitions of shooting. So if you are not going to teach them proper technique at the beginning, they will make probably much more attempts outside of the practice and they will get bad habits of the shooting technique, which is probably most difficult uh, technical skills from the coordination point of view. So it's take time to get on the right shooting mechanic. So if we start earlier, we have more chance to become good shooters. From the other side, related to the strain of the kids, I try to do this with several kids in mini basket schools, but also with my son, who is now a player in the first Italian league. And he's 20. So believe me, if you're going to teach kids to use legs when shooting in age of six, seven, eight years, they can shoot technically good. Even with big ball, even on the three three zero five baskets. So try to teach them proper technique. Of course, now we cannot. We have no time to discuss what is the meaning of proper technique. But let's say square the basket, use legs at the beginning. So technically, I think very important part of technical content in mini basket at the first stage is to teach them shooting mechanic or basic 
shooting form, like follow through, uh, elbow, beef rules, and all those stuff which we are going to teach regularly. Of course, next very important segment, as I already mentioned, is movement without the ball. Because don't say to me that we cannot teach six, seven, eight years old boys and girls backdoor cut. Of course we can. So tactically, what we can teach them, because this is immediately individual tactic, should be connected with the individual tactic. When you should use backdoor cut, when you are seeing defender's hand on the passing line, cut. Without saying anything, without showing your thumb, without touching your t-shirt, without touching your head, immediately, automatically, when you are seeing hand on the def defender's hand on the passing line, backdoor cut. When you are seeing defender in front of you, but not on the passing line, front door cut. So basics of movement without the ball, you should start teaching kids at the beginning. So after that, coaches, it's up to players and it's up to creativity of the coaches to develop drills, to develop drills which are going to get from simple to complex. So if you start teaching kids backdoor cut when they are under eight, let's say like this, so in under 16, probably even less talented players will know what to do and when to execute backdoor cut, front door, front door, front door cut and other things. So I think that technically we should consider importance of movement without the ball as a part of drive and kick game, as a part of other stuff which are coming in the later part of their career. Tactically, let's move on the tactic. Tactically, we should teach them basics of spacing and timing because, because main problem which in which we are going to face in mini basket that everybody are sprinting to the ball. We should explain to kids that uh, having 10 players close to the ball, no space to drive. So it's first of all risky for injuries because everything can happen with kids when they, when they start to play something, something like four on four, five on five, and they want to play, but they don't know. So we should teach them basics of spacing with good spacing between two, three, then four players. Individual tactic of 101. What is the meaning of individual tactic in, in 101 situation? Uh, uh, I com I'm completely agree with, uh, with all the stuff which Coach Eric said before, but uh, it's very important to teach basic individual tactic skills. For example, player is close to you, you should use, uh, you should use uh, drive. Player is away from you, you must shoot the ball. Player is close to you, you should use drive fake. Player is away from you to separate, to make separation from him. Player is away from you, you should use shot fake in order to get him closer and then to beat him penetrating. Then another stuff which is related with previous session, when and how to use individual tactic of stopping. For example, my I'm teaching my players not only mini basket, also in older age groups, so every time when they are receiving frontal passes, one of the good examples, drive and kick. But for example, frontal passes when you receive back pass from the low post position. Always frontal passes, jump stop. Because it's not risky, because you have not pivot foot. You can start with cross step left, right, without problem, without possibility to make traveling at the beginning. So at the beginning, one of the main problems of kids is how to start dribble without traveling. So jump stop when you are going to receive frontal passes, when you're going to receive lateral passes or passes after some moves like diamond exit, pin down, whatever, then use two contact stop. This is about individual tactic. Another stuff which is related also to five on five in the older age group, but is part of individual tactic. And I think that we should start teach kids immediately. They are smart because if they can handle 25 video games, don't tell me that they cannot handle one or three basic rules, basic basketball rules. It's just about coaches creativity and coaches way to convince them and to show them right stuff. So don't expect everything from YouTube. You should put yourself inside. You should be creative to find a way to teach kids and to convince the kids that they can do that stuff. So, for example, defender is close to you. You are not going to use two-hand pass. Even if you are not strong enough, 
but don't tell me that in under eight kids are not strong enough to make one hand pass five meters. They are. But we should teach them that tactically, defender is close to you, you should use one hand pass. Defender is away from you, for example, transition situations, or defender is not aggressive, you can use two hands chest pass. If you are going to create bad habits that they are always using, that they are always using chest pass, two hands chest pass at the beginning, you will face big, big problem when defense become aggressive against them. So very, very important. Another step, defender is aggressive. You don't need to escape. You don't need to scare. Use pivot, pass ball, and cut. Those things are basic things, basic parts of individual tactic, which we should teach kids even in early age. So under eight, under nine, no problem to teach them. Another step, every time pass ball to the player in front of you, and every time defensively run under the ball level. Coaches, even in top level, there are the basic principles of offense or basic principles of transition defense. So those stuff, we should teach them tactically, as well as some basic rules of two-on-two -two and three-on-three -three game, like cut and replace, receive the ball in triple threat position, be ready to attack on the catch, don't hesitate to shoot the ball if you are free. So you are free, shoot the ball. If you are shooting ball from the under eight to under 16, probably you will become shooter with good practice. But if you are just driving, nothing to do because in under 14, under 16, defenses are going to be so good that you cannot score from driving every time. Of course, I'm not saying that we don't need to drive. Absolutely no. We should teach them even different way of finishing. But we should also teach them shooting because if you cannot shoot, you're not a basketball player. So physical, I'm moving now a physical part in this age. Window of trainability in under eight, under nine is for free, free basic, uh, uh, basic physical abilities. Coordination, speed, and aerobic endurance. When I'm saying aerobic endurance, I should say, because probably some of you are surprised with this, but believe me, uh, kids can run. As you know, if you're looking for kids outside of basketball practice, they can run two, three hours without stopping. Probably not today, kids, because they, are all, they already have, especially in the European Union, they already have iPhone 12, so they have no time to run because they're pretty busy with, with phones. But generally, if you're left in kids outside, if you're as a parent looking for kids out, they, outside, they can move without any problem, without stopping. So they have scientifically approved same aerobic capacity, of course, related to their, their kilograms and to their age, like senior players. So if you are not going to teach to work on aerobic endurance, it's going to be a big problem in later part of their career. So, of course, we are not going to, on three mini basket practices at the beginning, we are not going to give them to run 45 minutes around the basketball court. Absolutely no. But we should combine fundamental moves, fundamental basketball skills with six, eight, 12 minutes of continuous running around the court, uh, footwork, passing to the coach, give and go, score on other lap. They are doing dribble between the cons, then scoring options, uh, first uh, rim, reverse layup, something like that. So aerobic endurance must be made. Speed is very important to understand that they see in this age, it's sensitive zone for speed. So we should work on speed, but there is a one limit. So as a coaches, we should respect basics of teaching methodology. Teaching basics of teaching methodology, basic rule of teaching methodology, proper execution, repetition, and then intensity. So regarding the speed, we cannot put kids in the situation that they are doing with full speed skills which they are not doing correctly. So this is limitation related to speed. So don't pretend from them to do something on the high intensity which they don't know how to do. Because first of all, they will forget for technique, absolutely especially in some competitive drills, and they will create bad habits. And as you know, in motor learning, it's much more difficult to correct bad habits than to teach kids who don't know anything. So it's always too easy to, to, to draw on the, on, the, on the whiteboard, then to clean, and then to read again. 
This is very important to, the to understand, especially with motor learners. We, we don't need to uh, give them possibility to create bad habits. Of course, mistakes are going to happen because mistakes are part of the practice. But our job is to correct mistakes. In the heart of the coaching, the job is correction. You can, uh, you can face a lot of young coaches with our experience who are choosing some great drills from YouTube. And they are implementing those drills and they are talking with mothers and fathers or they are, they, are not, they are not making corrections. This is completely wrong. Even if mother is pretty and if father is a good manager. Absolutely no. They should be inside the practice and they should correct mistakes immediately. Because if they are not going to correct mistakes, especially in the first initial part of basketball, they will have big problems after that in mistake corrections. So why? Because instead to, to create automatic into to arrive as soon as possible in an automatic stage of good technique we will arrive or we will arrive on automatic uh, stage of mistakes and then we cannot be coaches and our players are going to change sport they will go to play tennis in serbia or probably football in, in holland so because of Novak djokovic and because of good level of football in your country coordination of course coordination when i'm saying coordination physically i'm seeing basic fundamental moves like i already mentioned Walking, jumping, stopping, uh, throwing, landing, one leg, two legs. And as soon as possible, when they know how to run without the ball, we should add basketball. We should use geography, so-called geography of basketball court, to teach them. Of course, from the social part, we should uh, start pushing them in, in a basketball society. Developing a culture to help the players to respect the coaches, to be to respect basic rules of sport ethic and fair play, to respect opponents, to respect referees, to respect everybody, because this is part of, of team sports as a basketball. So nobody likes party breakers. Why to create bad habits from the beginning? Of course, kids already in this age, they know who is the best player in the team. But we should offer to them equal opportunities and we should teach them basics, basic rules of, of basketball. Okay, uh, next Dana, one yes? question. Yes. Um, your time is perfect. Um, question from Thijs. Do you also put attention to uh, for training anaerobic endurance already? And already oh. is my word. Uh, anaerobic sorry. endurance, no, so should be moderate intensity of the practice. Moderate intensity of the practice, only time when we are going to choose anaerobic endurance. It's part of anaerobic alactat of phosphagen endurance when we are working on some speed drills. That means six to eight seconds of high intensity, not anaerobic lactate endurance, like 25, 30 seconds, like suicide or something, something like this. No. Of course, they will work in some anaerobic zone, playing games, one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three, but not some specific development because their body and uh, physiologically, they are not ready for anaerobic endurance. So try to avoid because you can create a lot of health problems using intensive anaerobic, lactate anaerobic practice in this age. Okay, clear. Okay, so next stage is uh, under 11 girls and under 12 boys, because of course girls are going to get mature before. As you know, in elementary school, if you are looking for girls, they are like mothers for kids. So this is normal, this is physiology. What we should do in this age, technically, uh, we should refine previously learned skills and we should connect basketball technical fundamentals, basketball technical skills with basic motor skills. For example, low skip, high skip with dribble, big side hand, change of direction with after jumping, after landing, jumping over two hurdles or after or over the line and then start dribble. This is also part of some conditioning for kids. So we should connect technical and tactical skills with basic motor skills. It's up to us to create drills. It's up to coaches to be creative because this is art. Coaching is art. You cannot just listen and copy something what Pablo Lasso, Arik Šivek or Željko Bradović is doing. Of course, this is completely wrong. Then Next step or next content of technical, uh, technical, technical practice in this age it is to now uh, provide new situations. So when, if we 
If you work before, for example, on parallel defensive stance movement, now we are going diagonal or combination of uh, defensive stance, sprinting, stopping. If you connect, connect those skills with top basketball, this is close out. So parallel defensive stance, sprinting, stopping. This is close out, probably most important defensive skill in the top level. After defensive rotations, ball side, help side, drive and kick game, we should make close out. Our job is to teach kids correctly to make close out. Another stuff why to add combination of the skills is injury prevention. Because coaches, uh, usually, uh, first of all, basketball is unilateral sport. What is the meaning of that word? So 91%, this is scientifically approved, 91% of the injuries of basketballs happen on the activities on one leg, which is usually that happen not when starting, but when stopping, landing, and changing direction. So what's supposed to be uh, content of practice in this age? Of course, we are not going to work with weightlifting or with some special stuff, but we should teach our kids how to move their, their own body, how to stop their own body. Because, okay, if you have 150 power horses in BMW, if you are without brakes, nothing to do. Because control means efficiency. So practically, working on close-out situations, like start, stop, and start again, with change of direction, a lot of agility drills, with ball and without the ball, we are going to work on injury prevention. We are going to strengthen our knees, our ankles, our hips, which is very important part of long-term athletic development program. So start to work on so give and go situations, different kind of pivoting, passing, shooting, dribbling, but different angles, changing angles, changing space, changing time, increase speed, increase intensity, and try to provide different drills for the same skills. This is one of the main uh, main rule, not only in youth age, but in, in all age. I'm completely agree that we, we share this idea in VSSC and uh, that we should create different drills for same skill. Because when I was player two million years ago, I remember when coach would say dribble, that was that was always elbow, half court, elbow, finish. So in today basketball, it's going to be ridiculous if you're going to dribble like this. Just going on the pick and roll, you have 90, 90 degree change of direction. So zigzag is ridiculous. If you're working on zigzag, you cannot do anything. You cannot beat any kind of defense doing just that stuff. So try to change drills. I think it's just one advice, especially for young coaches, because I know that a lot of coaches here are dealing with, with uh, youth programs, with young kids. So you as a coaches, you should create your folder in your computer, tablet or notebook or paper. You should create folder with your drills and say, OK, close out drills. And now 10 drills. Fast break with two players, five options. Dribbling, 10, 20, 30 options. So and then when you're going to create practice plan, you can choose one by one some specific drills for specific goal of the practice. Because if you want to work on some skill, okay, you can work with different drills. Because it's not easy to maintain focus of the kids in youth program. So you should dribble, but not dribble every time zigzag. Try to create different drills, try to create different angles, try to put cons on the different, uh, different positions. But respecting the rule that you are going to move on the next level when you are satisfied with previous one. It, because changing drills doesn't mean that you're a good coach. You are a good coach if your kids can skip from one to the another level, like they are doing in video games. Level one, you are eating enough coins, enough coins, you can move on the next level. So try to do that stuff. Of course, we are adding some new technical skills and you are, we are adding different way of finishing, which is very important part of basketball. So if you work before, if you acquire before, uh, crossover and between the legs. Now probably we are working on double change. Crossover between the legs. Between the legs, crossover. If we work before on normal layup, now we are doing extended layup. Now we are doing reverse layup. And we are doing as soon as possible stuff with weak side hand. This is very important. 
in this stage, but this is the main goal for the next for the next uh, stage. So different way of finishing and free game. Let players to do something on the practice. Give to them rules what you want from them. Pass to player in front of you, run, and let them play. Then after five, six, six minutes, stop drill, stop plays, and say, okay, we do this, this, this. Why you are doing mistakes in this? Ask them open questions in order to see how they are thinking. Because coaching is not what we are saying. It's not what players are accepting from our speech. So always you should create feedback. Of course, kids are not going, even in European Union, you are very flexible and you are very polite with kids, but they cannot create your practice. You cannot do on the practice what they want. You cannot do on the practice how they want. Absolutely no. Because we are teachers and they are learners. We are fathers and they are kids. So they should listen what we say. But from the other side, we should give to them opportunity to challenge their brain, to challenge their mindset, thinking about that. Why you made five mistakes on the passing? Probably because you didn't use right passing technique. Probably because you didn't use legs when you're passing the ball on middle distance, six, seven meters. Probably because you didn't use pivoting before to pass the ball. So we should teach them. Of course, we should open new world for them. You should work on specific drills, combining different skills, but we should have feedback from their side. This is very, very important. This involvement of the kids in the basketball is very important because they will feel important and they will try to understand causes and consequences, which is very important part of team spirit. Because usually today kids, uh, they are uh, living in comfort zone. They, they have everything immediately. So we should understand that nothing is going, nothing well is going to happen if they are in comfort zone. We should push them out of the comfort zone, but we should expect from them some kind of responsibility because they, they only want rights, not under 12, under 11. Even older kids, they want their rights. Okay, you have rights, but you have your, also your responsibilities. If I'm saying pass ball to the player in front of you, if you are seeing the player, if you don't want to pass, sorry, bench. Even in that age, because they should be responsible because they depend on each other. And we depend on them. Our job is to teach them. Our job is to correct mistakes immediately. Tactically, what we, are, we should do in this age? Uh, development, refine previous, uh, refine, refine, refine skills from previous, uh, self, previous stage and then go over. So new ways of collaboration in two on two, three on three. And of course, one on one from different position, because of course there are tall boys and girls and small, but they should know how to play in all positions. As Arik said before, we don't know if some guy who is now small will be in the 195. If you are going to reject him from low post game, we cannot play in under 16 uh, mismatch situations. We cannot find good solutions. So all the kids should play on all positions. If you kill some talented players like. Jokic in youth program saying to him, okay, you are big, just go under the basket and take your shots. He will never be so successful player as he is right now. He will never earn some money as he is earning right now. He will never be so good player as he is because we, are, we don't need to limit. Especially talented players, they must have more freedom, but they must have also more responsibility. So you should work with them. So practically, now in this age, we should also start with basic defensive positioning, how to play on both side and help side. Here is just one, my idea about it, that we don't need to say to player, okay, in American terminology, you, you should say strong side and help and a weak side. If you're saying to kids weak side, meaning of weak side is I'm not going to play defense on weak side. So I, I'm trying to use terminology both side and help side because you should help. You are not weak. So it's also something to deal with kids. Understand that if you're saying that stuff in senior team, no problem. They know what is the meaning of that. But if you're saying with kids, usually Murphy rule, they will catch wrong part of the sentence and they will probably live with that wrong sensation. So think about all those stuff because kids are much more sensitive than senior players. Because with senior players, just take money from them, punish them with money and they will, they will learn. But with kids, you should do a lot of different 
mental games in order to get them with you and in order to build their personality as you want. So defensively, of course, positioning, as I say before, here now we are going to start with some movement on two, three, four players. So here is the perfect time connecting with Arik sessions to start working hard on different kind of collaborations with two, three and four players. Drive and kick, basic stuff, because they should know what to do when genius set offense or motion offense of genius course is finished. So they should know how to play basketball. This is not, we are not going to teach them how to run plays. We are going to teach them how to run, how to play basketball. This is about decision making. What to do? Uh, your teammate is dribbling to you. What you should do? You should spread court or you should make backdoor cut. As I said before, you are going to see defender hands on the passing line. He's denying pass. Backdoor cut without any kind of communication. This is non-verbal communication, which become automatism. And we should start working on this. What else, coach? Of course, we don't need to run horns, something else in this age. Teaching them how to understand basketball, how to, to, uh, to improve basketball IQ, putting them in specific situation. Some of players will learn faster. Some of players will learn slower. This is normal because they're different. But our job is to provide to them different situations. And another part of our job is when we are showing to them some new situation, some new drill, we are going to evaluate their talents. Talented players are going to recognize situations faster, immediately, and they are going to use immediately learned skills. Less talented players are not going to do that stuff. So I'm always sharing with players some ideas about Vlade Divac. Probably you know him, I don't know how many, 18 years I think he played in NBA. And uh, we play in the same team. And I remember under 60 national team of Serbia, Coach Pešić was over there. When he showed to him, he showed to him in, in morning practice one specific pivot move. In the same, same evening, he scored 12 points on the game, friendly game, using that moves. Another player uh, used that move after three years. So when he used that hook move, we put the towels in the air from the bench. This is the difference between 100 million player and a hundred million dollars player and one hundred thousand. So nothing else. You should evaluate how players are. This is selection. We should look how they are implementing learn skills, probably how they find their own solution. This is also for us important because probably looking for players, we will learn from them, even in this age, how they find some solution. Probably we have not in mind it, but we should give them freedom and we should change situations on the court, putting them in situation that they should make decisions. Of course, their decision should be and usually are based on learned technical and tactical skills. So fundamental spacing with two, three, four players and just probably uh, five out situation to teach them some basic stuff on pass and cut and replace basic things of drive and move. Physically, we should uh, start working on conditioning, of course, using just uh, their own body. A lot of drills like squat, lunge, step ups, jumps over the lines, jumps over the over the small hurdles. Also, stairs, coaches. Why not in under 12? Sometimes when you have not enough time on the practice, you are waiting for volleyball till finish to finish the practice. You are behind jump rope stairs on the on on, on your gym. Why not? This is very, very important. Of course, another important part of conditioning is uh, to teach them elementary dynamic mobility drills, like lunge, lunge with rotation, different stuff. You can find a lot of stuff on internet, and I'm sure that you are using that stuff. But those stuff are also injury prevention. So practically, we are going to kick two, two mosquitoes. So one mosquito is conditioning, another mosquito is injury prevention. So with one kick, we are doing we are doing all the stuff together. In this age, this is very important to understand, they are going to move a little bit away from the families. So now it's time to create teams because now they work, they, they like to identify themselves with groups. So now it's good to say, okay, this is group of our team, Red Star or 
Maccabi, they like to, to be a part of the group because they are moving a little bit away from the parents and we should use them, providing to them comfort zone in their group, providing to them interesting drills, providing to them good development. Even in this age, uh, coaches, they can evaluate, evaluate our work. If they are getting better in skills, they will come on the practice. If no, they will change spot. So it's up to us. Our main job is to do the right stuff in the right age. So they should finish practice. We, we as a coaches, we should always provide positive environment, environment, always using sandwich method, positive stuff. So say something positive after say something about area of improvement and finish with positive environment because they should be willing to come on the next practice. This is very important. They don't, they don't need to go out of the practice with head down looking to the floor. No, they should smile. They should have open eyes, open mind to see, okay, where is the next practice coach? This is our job to provide to them that kind of environment and that kind of challenging skills. Very important. Next level under, sorry. Can I interrupt you for a second? Of course. Um, two questions about this part. Um, yeah. First of all, uh, and that's something what um, we have been reading in Holland quite a lot. Um, uh, is it uh, better to focus on better athletes than put focus on better basketball players? So uh, at the end, we have more athletic basketballers, basketball players, what we in the Netherlands recognize as the athletic skills model. Both, coach. Both coach. We should, of course, look for uh, physical skills. This is very important part of the selection because they are coming from different backgrounds. So probably they are coming from different sport. We don't need to look too much for some specific basketball skills. Of course, it's important to consider, but it's not main stuff. We should make combination when we are going to choose the players. We should work on conditioning basic general conditioning, speed, agility, quickness, respecting windows of trainability. But of course, we should start working on, on, on basketball skills. Uh, and uh, when working on basketball skills, it's very important to make difference because bef between dribble cons and dribble players. So as soon as possible, we should add defense. As soon as possible, we should add decision-making drills. Because like this, they are going to grow up fast. They are going to learn basketball fast because they are open mind they can they can accept they can acquire a lot of knowledge in this age so we should consider physical stuff as a main stuff but definitely we should make combination because as i said in previous slide always combine specific basketball preparation with technical and tactical problem you read, can i say can i say something about this of course i um uh, always uh, we are building now a selection uh, of uh, basketball players for national team, all our academies, whatever. And we are building now a presentation and a, and a document about the selection, which is exactly what uh, uh, Nenad answered you now, which is going to be uh, combining with physical part, basketball part and mental part. And from this 100% of selection, we still keep 20% from the 100% for our eyes. Because I think, I think that our eyes, and when I say our coach's eyes, sometimes you see a player that maybe is not a great athlete, or maybe he's not a great basketball player, or maybe he's not both. Yeah, But you see something very special about this guy. So we keep 20% more for choosing and selecting these players. But 80% of the players that we're going to check on those talent dates that we are planning to do will be combined of those mentally, physically, and basketball. So it's really about combination of those three elements. Thank you. Okay, thank thank oh, you. Of course, um, of course. And also, of oh course. yeah, you go first, sorry. To say something about it. So, but uh, I think that uh, we cannot uh, find, especially in one generation or in one academy or in two, three years, we cannot find uh, 10 Kobe brands. So, but we don't need to uh, put out some kids with some special gift, as Eric said. So, if we can find some fetish shooter, okay, if he's great shooter, soft hand, okay, consider him as a player. Because coaches, even in under 18, I remember in under 18, Costas Lucas was fatty boy. He was winner of uh, European Championship under 18, but with 10 kilos more than now. 
So that's part is you can correct. But if you can find if he, if he is some let's say stone hand, nothing to do. So you should understand which kind of skill you can change with proper practice and which kind of skills you cannot change. So in this age, selection become rigid. Okay. Yep. Okay. Go, go on. With uh, let me have one more question because I think uh, you gave answer to uh, to it a little bit. Um, but there was a question that in the uh, ideal world we all have players at a young age, but in real in reality, and especially in the Netherlands, we get new players age um, uh, that are physically talented, and but they join basketball on a later age. How we can uh, how do we uh, best integrate them in our programs? So first of all, they should start like beginners, so they cannot skip first part of basketball. You as a coach, you should provide, if they are physically great talent, you should provide for them some individual additional practices to arrive on the level of the kids who are already two, four, three years in basketball. Because coaches, uh, everybody are talking about talented players, but nobody's talking about talented coaches. I think that first Tarek's job, and I'm doing that stuff in Federation when I was in Serbian Federation and also Iranian Federation, is to find talented coaches. Because let's say stupid coaches or coaches without education, they cannot recognize talented players. So we are starting fishes thinking from head. So we should start from the coaches and then talented coaches who are willing to get better, to develop their skills, they can choose talented players, not opposite. Because talented players are, let's say, transition product, but talented coaches are beginning and are foundation for any club and any federation. Thank you, Nenad. Uh, let's continue, and um, if possible, let's speed it up a little bit because we have uh, three, four more age groups, uh, okay. which we have. Yes, to, yeah. Next groups, yes, we have also something else after that. So okay. under 16 cadets. So it's uh, in this age, uh, it's very difficult from from 12 to 16 to get better from coordination point of view because they are growing up intensively. So in this age, for example, from 11, 12 to 15 kids are growing up sometimes 30 centimeters. So they, ha they have problem with coordination. But it's not meaning of that that we should put them, kick them out of the basketball. We should keep working on coordination, having in mind that we'll get fruits of that work in the later part of their career. So now, technically, we are going to refine all the stuff. We are going to do a lot of repetitions because they should stabilize technique from the previous stages. And we are going to create now about a lot of decision-making situations, putting them in advantage or disadvantage situations, like handicap situation, fast break, how to react on the fast break, two on one, three on two, four on two, four on three, five on two, five on three, five on four, a lot of situations on fast break, because main way to play basketball in under 16 should be fast break. As Arik said, I completely agree with him. So even in international level, too much coaches are looking too much for tactic. I, they don't know how to score, how to score with left hand layup from the full sprint. This is completely wrong. Personally, when I'm looking, you know, even in under 16 European Championship, when I'm looking warm up and where I'm seeing a lot of coaches, when they are doing two lines layup from the left side, moving in the middle, immediately my decision, if I'm not seeing game before, okay, push them on the big side hand and you will have a lot of advantages because they are not ready. So work on that. Try to provide to your players different situations. Technically, this is the perfect age to do everything with weak side hand. So different finishing, different dribble, different passing, because we should provide for them left and right side. There is a famous crossing effect. So when if you are working on some skills with your weak side hand, you are mentally doing the same stuff, same stuff like with strong hand. If you are doing just with strong hand, you are not improving weak hand. So this is very important. So doing drills with weak side hand, mentally you have this stimuli also for strong side. But doing everything with strong side, nothing to do with weak side. So it's very important about to think about that when you are doing uh, technical practice in this age. Tactically, we are going up. We are raising level of difficulty in our drills, spacing in offense, perfect age to improve, improve. I'm not saying learn, to improve and to become automatic drive and kick situations. So ability to recognize situation, when to move without the ball, how to pass the ball, and also tactic. For example, coaches in drive and kick game. If you are doing perfect moves, 
But if you are using, if you are catching the ball and using two hand chest pass instead to use off the dribble pass, nothing to do. For example, off the dribble pass is one of the main skill for me for guards. So in today basketball, uh, looking for pick and roll for all the situations for athletic athleticism of the players. If you are not using quick off the dribble pass, you cannot create advantage. So perfect moves, drive and kick, but wrong technique, nothing to do. If they are catching, passing, it's too late. Or they will make traveling or they will make something else. So this is the time when we are going to use a lot of driving kick, understanding, understanding different changes, fast break, understanding how to read and how to punish second and third defensive help. This is straightly linked with Arik's session before. So drive, 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 extra pass, finish. So not just one help because... Uh, Good players are going to recognize first help. Great players, third help. So you should open their vision. You open their vision, feel peripheral vision to understand what's going to happen, not on the first help, but which kind of help is coming from the help side and try to provide for them proper passing technique or proper, solution, proper solutions for that situation. Physically is uh, uh, time to work on specific basketball skills. So speed, agility, quickness, or... Uh, short space, change of direction, uh, with ball, without the ball, so repeat speed ability. Now, in this age, in under 16, we can start to work hardly on anaerobic lactate endurance. In 15, 16, we can make two or three, we must to make two or three sessions with uh, focus on anaerobic endurance. Can be five on five, five minutes, can be six courts fast break, can be suicide with ball, without the ball, with big side hand. But definitely in this age, in season, two sessions, and out of the season, in pre-season, even three sessions with focus on anaerobic endurance because now it's uh, physically they are ready and physiologically they can, uh, they can resist those practices. And this is the right stimuli. It's not about resisting. It's about window of trainability for that skill or that physical ability. Now they have a lot of uh, duties also out of the practice because in this age with good, I know that you are fighting to have more time. I think one of the main reasons why you are a little bit behind of other countries is volume of the practice. I hope Arik is going to push you to work much more. So in this age, under 16, good players and good teams in Serbia, they are doing in, in good academies, in good clubs, they're doing between seven, eight practices per weekend game for weekend. So everyday practice plus two or three individual practices in the morning. This is about volume. You cannot, you cannot because you cannot raise level of, the, of your game if you're not going to, to raise level of volume of the practice. Of course, intensity is normal, but also volume. They should have enough repetitions. They should have enough training stimuli. And also here is the time to try working on uh, analyzing their performance. You must show to them how they are playing. You must show to them how top players are doing. You must find identification of your players with some top, play, top players worldwide. So this is the part when they should be sticked to the basketball for all the life. It's too easy to lose players than to create players, but it's up to us, as I said before, to provide light, light, uh, right environments. And of course, in from 12 to 16, even in 12, you should start with some additional individual practices because they have different problems, they have different needs, and you as a coach, you should start doing like this. Of course, because of big variation of the kids in this age, you can divide this age in two groups, first group and advanced group. So advanced group, and we are here on this level, uh, advanced group, you should work practically in under 16, everything like seniors except maximal strength because they are going to compete on international level. They will have nine games on international level. I'm talking about top players and they will compete with against pick and roll, against zone, against zone, press against, against everything. So technically, they should be familiar with everything. Again, they should. you should insist on non-dominant hand. You should work on development of anticipation skills. Tactically, they should do everything because now it's time to move everything. Personally, I don't like to start to use pick and roll before under 14 
and that was also a rule in Serbian Federation, because we want to work on 101. Because as I said before, 101 is for all the life. Five on five is probably just for one game. Physically, we should increase volume and intensity of specific basketball conditioning. And in this age, in, from under 14, we should teach them uh, technique of weightlifting drills. Because in 15, 16, they should start already working, working with weights. Of course, not with maximal loading, but with moderate loading, they should start, they should be familiar with drills because top players from under 16, especially girls, they are jumping in the senior teams. So they should be familiar, they should know technique, and they should have some level of conditioning, even in weightlifting programs, in order to be ready for next level of, of their video games. Of course, uh, as a coaches, we should uh, make periodization of the practice in this age, month by month, week by week, we should know what are the goals and how to achieve the goals. And we should also define time frame for each short-term and long-term goals in, in conditioning. Of course, always all the stuff which they made before should be on the higher level of the speed. So we should increase intensity, uh, quick decisions, never stick the ball, offensively try to break the paint, defensively, as Arik said, don't let them to break paint because they have much more solutions from the middle than from the other side. This is also part, part of answer for the coaches who ask this, so I completely agree with this. Under 18, it's senior basketball. Only different is volume of the practice. Intensity, uh, technique, tactic, absolutely same. Of course, I'm talking about under 18 players who already passed previous stages. Not about under 18 who start to play basketball in 14. Absolutely no. They should do the same program. You cannot go from uh, ch uh, childhood to university, even if you are late. So you should go elementary school, high school, then university. So and that, you and that's so sorry to interrupt. We have like 15 minutes left now. So okay, okay for you? 15. 15. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Don't worry. Thank you. Uh, thank you for info. So this in this age. Practically, it's up. in under 16, you are going to, pre, to, uh, to make specialization by position. You are, you are starting with some specific, specific program for big players, for perimeter players. In this age, you already made specialization by position, and practices should be reflect that. So, guards should work more on perimeter skills. Of course, they will work also on low post skills, but more perimeter skills. As as well as big players are doing inside game, but also they will work probably 30% of their practices on, on perimeter player skills, because we want to create all-round players who should be ready to read mismatch, who should be ready to punish defensive mistakes, who should be ready to compete on international level. So now we are doing a lot of technical drills under physical pressure, shooting after jumps, shooting after defensive slides, uh, technically, one against two, two against three. So, if your point guard is ready to beat two defenders in full court, one against two game, no problem for you to play against full court press. But if you are not working on that, you cannot expect from him to be ready if some Spanish team is going to play full court press against you. Unfortunately, unfortunately Serbian teams are now not playing so aggressive. So, I'm fan of aggressive defense and I'm a fan of, of fast break, of course. So, tactically, we are adding all the kind of screens. In under 16, we are doing basics of on-ball screens and basic of off-ball screens. Of course, they know. But in this age, we should refine, we should master all the situations. But again, coaches, be ready to connect this with individual tactic. For example, flare screen. Of course, good screen, very effective. But if passer is going to use two hands chest pass instead two hands over the head pass, Nothing to do with flair. So, again, be ready to adjust your tactic to the level of your technique. Don't pretend from your players to do some tactical stuff if they are not familiar with technical skills necessary for that tactical, tactical events, that tactical situation. So, always, as more as possible, try to do competitive drills because this is competition. Physically, technically, tactically, I believe that every practice should be on the on the limit of the players, 
Of course, it's not meaning every time killing them physically. But if one practices point on conditioning, should be on their limit. Net practice tactically on their limits. Net practical, net practice with physical pressure. For example, individual practice. Don't go out of the gym if you're not scoring 10 three point shots in the row. Sorry, this is your job. We are not going to finish practice final five before to make three good defenses in the row. That's happened in the practice. How many times how, how many times you you see on the Euro League games that the coaches are saying, okay, we need two defenses. Yes, we need, we know that. But did you work on practice in that situation? Did you work on last second shots when they are tired? Did you work on some conditioning stuff, sprint in the end of the practice? Why? Because in overtime, we need to make sprint to stop last shot of the opponent team. So, should be everything uh, specific basketball. Conditioning too, coaches. So, we are working now, 80% of conditioning job is pointed to specific basketball condition. Explosive strain, speed, anaerobic endurance, lactate and alactate. We are using high intensity interval practice, of course, with proper recovery time between two practices. We are using complex combination coordination drills, and we are using, of course, advanced dynamic mobility drills, basics of periodization. Everything is like senior except maximal strain or maximal power. We should understand that in this age, top players are already in the senior teams, and even other kids should eat that bread, senior bread, not before. So intensity, game understanding capacity, and competitive drills, because they should compete, they should dealing with, with wins and with, uh, with uh, lost games, with defeats, how to get back, always what to do, next practice, next drill, next game, not of course, analyzing what's happened before and analyzing why we made some mistakes in the previous stuff, but always keep doing, keep uh, looking in front of you. Okay, now this is senior program. I, I, I think that we should skip because you will hear video of the clinic. Uh, technically, tactically, physically, this is top level of the basketball. You are doing everything like senior players. You are doing a lot of uh, a lot of tactically new stuff. Of course, even in under 16 and under 18, you should deal with zone defenses. We should deal with full court press offensively, offensively, because even if you are not believer in that kind of defenses, you should work on that because you are going to face teams who are going to use it. So they should know that. Intelligence is how to adjust yourself for new situations. So we should put our players in the practice in those situations in order to recognize fast quickly, immediately, those situations when happen on the game. This is our job. So, as you can see, it's big responsibility being basketball coach. You should deal with a lot of things. Because of that, you should never stop learning. Learning always, improving your coaching skills is must. You cannot bring that from Arik Shivek, from Pablo Lasso, and from someone else. This is your way. So, you should always work on that stuff. So, about senior teams, is everything is clear okay let's go on some other stuff so player development we have different segments periodization of the practice mental side uh, essential components of the game on court skills off court skills conditioning also some basic sports routine what to do recovery time stretching nutrition sleep time all the stuff are part are part of basketball not basketball right now, because in academies, in top clubs, kids from under 16 are practically on the same level like senior players with their duties, and they have much more because they are going in the school. So it's too difficult for them. How to build a program, some basic stuff, because we have 10 minutes more. Okay, I think that all program in all programs, you should define your goals. So long-term goals, short-term goals, and please uh, establish schedule. So what you should do this week, what should you do this month, what should you do this year? And after that, execute your plan. Follow your plan, no matter the cost. Of course, you are going to make some, uh, by the way, you should make some adjustments. But you, should, you need to go, you don't need to go away from your plan, your program. I remember when I was player, a lot of coaches work without problems. So if you lose the game, they kill us with conditioning practice on Monday. If you win game, we play football. I'm talking about top ex-Yugoslavian level. So this is not a good approach because you must have your program, winning or losing, because you can 
you can play excellent game and lose because you play against strongest team or you can play very bad game and win the game that is not going to influence to your long and short term problem you are going to adjust that what you must have if you want to if you want to build program talented people but again not only talented players recruit talented coaches talented coaches are foundation are cake talented players are strawberry cream on the cake organization be organized in everything team concept players today are selfish because fathers mothers agents are creating individual stuff you know, they are creating i instead to create we unfortunately for them basketball is team sport if you are not ready to sacrifice for the team nothing to do we are eating same bread and we are eating same other stuff discipline of course without discipline nothing to do but discipline first of all for you coaches winning attitude coaches and then players leaderships coach and then players daily practice follow your program start to each practice with warm up drills try to change drills try to combine half court full court drills because basketball is not half court but is not also also full court explain the purpose of each drill before you run with short explanation it's very good to have as arik said good uh, different options different variations of some dream because you're not going to waste some if you're saying just four corner drill drive and kick four corner drill one on one four corner drill low post game you don't need to waste time in one practice 10 minutes in one week this is 60 minutes some coach who is doing better than you is going to kill you after that one again try to combine psychologically demanded drills with physically demanded drills always combinations as more as possible competitive drills and every time if you want to learn if you want to show something do it at the beginning of the main part of the practice when players are mentally ready to to acquire new knowledge ambition bravery discipline intelligence as i said before body constitution speed power look for some skills uh, needed for top basketball levels this is very important like this construction of the team just some basic stuff point guard must be is pass if is possible uh, leader not only technical and tactically he should be good ball handler extended hand of the coach shooting guard uh, player physically one of the best not because he is only good offensive player but he should guard michael jordan from opponent team so he should be best defender small forward too but he is more connection between inside and perimeter should be good rebounder also much more than position 2 and should be able to play back to the basket as arik said too i am completely agree so you can you cannot play today basketball without it so power forward uh, aggressive player who can be second point guard in the team because he is spreading the court playing almost always outside of the of the basket because he should be ready to make skip pass reverse the ball he is practically second best passer in the team and big man pivot hardest worker in the team in new program if we are facing big problem because nobody is going to respect big players they are running up and down setting screens boxing out fighting like boxers and never they had the ball this is not about the players it's about the coaches so even if you have not extremely big players you must have low post player in your team so i believe that four out one in is probably best best uh, position best alignment to start because of spacing because of other stuff Uh, backup point guard is player he who is probably mentally strongest player in the team because he or she is coming is coming on the court always when trouble happens so he should be he's probably technically not on that level like first starting point guard but mentally must be very strong because he's coming always in difficult situations seventh player it's two and three some skill must some must have some special skill which starting position 2 and 3 have not has not so something else to change because if you have always same players it's not good i like to have in my team for example one point guard for example big tall right hander and another are small one left hander so you have much more tactical options even in youth program then eight player again position 4 and 5 backup player good shooter good rebounder best defender on the on the on on the low post try to find some special player with some 
special stuff which starting five players has not. And now last four players, younger players with future. If you recognize that they have some special gifts, some special talent, try to put young players working with others. It's going to be challenging for them. It's going to be inspiration for them. But of course, uh, I think that uh, be, they will be much more motivated to have a part of the team than some weak players, same age. Of course, it's up to you. I'm just, I'm just saying uh, my opinion. Another stuff working with team, uh, so probably it's not uh, linked with uh, all the human rules of European Union, but this is basketball, this is competition. So never let other people to work with your team. Nobody is perfect. You should understand that players are going to make mistakes uh, and you should uh, support them when they're making mistakes. Of course, working on mistakes, corrections immediately in the real time when mistakes happen. So you should take care also on the bench players because they have not that kind of enjoyment and satisfaction on starting five. Uh, don't change your attitude because of, uh, because of mistakes on the court. Respect every player and probably you should talk more with bench players than with starting five players if you have that kind of, of tips because everybody are part of the teams and of course we know that everything depends on the winning and be coach who is going to take care also of other players. Now, of course, change your lineup in new program, I, I believe also in senior program, because some bench players will be more motivated if they are starting the game. You are not going to lose the game in the first five minutes and you are not going to win the game. So give them opportunity, especially if they are working hard on the practice. So try to support them, try to, uh, to, to create mentally strong team, giving them chance, but also doing like this, probably you are going to punish in some way some talented, lazy player who is in starting five. So you're, you are going to increase uh, competitiveness in your team, changing lineups game by game. So you must have more than five players in the team. Uh, don't speak bad against opposite coach, against referees, because they are doing mistakes as we are doing mistakes as a coach. Always insist on the pride and insist on your principles, even after when you lose the game. Our job is, as you can see, something to do. It's not something to do to players, but it's something to do with the players, especially in, from under 16 and older group. You should, we should have feedback from their side. We should prepare a game. We should be ready for game coaching. We should be experts. We should be teachers. We should be fathers, mothers, psychologists, everything in youth, because they should identify themselves with, with, with us. May not. Two minutes, I'm finished, okay? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, I know that I'm a little bit outside. And I think you will have this presentation, of course, that you should create some, uh, some time of template practices for specific age. Because, of course, not same the practices, but template of practices. Of course, when I'm saying template, I'm not saying same drills for each practice. No, absolutely no. Same goal of the practice. Same template, but with different drills. This is very, very important, and I think that we should consider. Uh, here, I will share with you with this, this presentation, so we'll have time uh, to check what I put over there. Of course, it's up to you to find something else, to put some other practice template for different ages, because as Eric says, this is not Bible. This is just my opinion, how I will deal with that problem. You can take it or leave it. It's up to you because one of the goal of the coaching clinics is to see what you like, but also to see our mistakes. So we are learning from mistakes. So don't, don't consider everything as a, as a true. It's, it's up to you to find arguments to accept or to negate this, to say, okay, I don't like this. Why? Not because I don't like her style of coach Nenad, but because I'm not that coach opinion. I am not that coach opinion. So consider that stuff. Here is just here are just templates for different ages, and let me finish this. This is for senior. Just to see, and now something more for you. Uh, so, coaches, you are the winner when you try to do your best, no matter what the result is. Yes, in youth program, definitely yes. Also, you should evaluate players by their efforts and their commitment on the practice. So. And then, of course, how they're using skills, practice skills, implementing in the game situation. 
winning at any cost is the most important. Of course, no. In youth program, absolutely no. Because nobody will remember who won Dutch championship in 2015. But everybody will remember coach who creates senior national team player. So be focused on that, especially in youth program. You can win and feel like a loser. Yes, if you give your best, if you are going to, uh, to do your best on the game, if you put your, all the effort, you should be satisfied because sometimes uh, Campazzo is going to score from the half court and nothing to do. So that's happened. So Murphy rule. Uh, another stuff, so in cute program with kids, especially mini basket, having fun, development, winning. This is the order of priorities and you should respect that. Aki, have same stuff, you can lose and feel like a winner if you give your best. Uh, I play, I must play to win because my players and my coaches are not going to be happy. No, this is not true. If you know that you give your best, this is good. So I think our main job in youth program is to teach players how to win practice. Then we are going to be gentlemen coaches and they will, with our help, they will win also game. But if they are not going to win every single drill, Every single challenge on the drill, they will not win the game. They will not become winners. When I'm saying every, of course, I'm, uh, I'm thinking most of because nobody is going to win every time. So winning is not priority. And if I'm not going to win, I'm not going to be competitive. Of course, no. This is clear. And of course, you should add something else 